<laughs> Greetings, comrades, in this video. Well, take a look at how much performance has improved between generations on the AM4 platform with six core processors. Well, also compare them to the Ryzen 5500X3D and find out whether it's even worth buying and how much faster it actually is than regular CPU. So grab your dumplings, pour yourself some VOD, okay, let's get started. All right, let's move on to our test participants. First up is the Ryzen 1600 based on the Zen 1 architecture. It has a 65 watt TDP, 16 megabytes of L3 cache, and an all core frequency of 3400 megahertz. This ancient CPU is where AMD Modern Glory began, but to be fair, it wasn't a great processor it lost badly to Intel back in the day. Still, it's a piece of history. I didn't include the Ryzen 2600, since it was just a simple refresh with barely any performance improvement well skip that one. Next comes the Ryzen 3600 built on the Zen 2 architecture, same 65 watt TDP but with 32 megabytes of L3 cache and an all core frequency of 4200 megahertz. Now this was a processor AMD could be proud of, it was fully competitive and even supported PCA 4.0, which was a big advantage. The move to 7 nanometers allowed higher clocks with lower power consumption. Then we have the Ryzen 5500, Zen 3 architecture, same 65 watt TDP, 16 megabytes of L3 cache, and 4200 megahertz all core frequency. It's not a full-fledged CPU, basically an APU with the integrated GPU disabled. But since it's still widely available new, it's interesting to see how it handles modern games and whether it's worth your attention. Next up is the mighty Ryzen 5600 also Zen 3, 65 watt TDP, 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and up to 4400 megahertz across all cores. This one truly changed the game. I consider it the best budget CPU for the AM4 platform, excellent performance for the price. And finally the star of the show, the Ryzen 5500X3D, same Zen 3 architecture but with a 105 watt TDP, 96 megabytes of L3 cache and boost clocks up to 3900 megahertz. Unfortunately, it came out far too late. Had AMD released it alongside the Ryzen 5700X3D and made it widely available, it could have been a huge success as an affordable upgrade option for older systems. You could have dropped it into something as simple as an A320 motherboard without worrying about VRM temperatures. Sadly, that ship has sailed. The first part of our tests will show stock performance, how CPU work out of the box with memory at 3200MHz CL16. You can see the ADA64 results on screen. One note, the memory is dual rank. All game tests were run at ultra settings with no GPU bottleneck, since we're focusing on CPU performance here. Let's begin. <laughs> Counter-Strike 2 low settings. Here we can see that 3D cache doesn't provide a significant performance boost compared to a regular Ryzen 5600. CS2, unlike CSGO, at least use, is some of the extra L3 cache, but not as efficiently as one would hope. The Ryzen 1600. Yeah, let's just say if you're aiming for a pro career, this chip belongs in the History Museum. The Ryzen 3600 and 5500 are practically twins good enough for a 200Hz monitor if you're not expecting miracles. If you want to support my efforts, the link to the donation will be in the description. Escape from Tarkov Streets of Tarkov map, low to medium settings, bots disabled. This is an older build of the game, so FPS isn't terrible yet. It's enough to compare CPU differences. Here the 3D cache performs noticeably better than the regular Ryzen 5600. The Ryzen 3600 though, 
Looks like it's on life support on new patch, as it'll probably crawl around 40 FPS, so don't even think about it. Ryzen 3600 and 5500 are close to each other again, but they also struggle on new patches. For smooth gameplay, newer CPU are strongly recommended. Cyberpunk 2077 Ultra Settings I specifically tested on a highway packed with NPC to stress the CPU, and it worked. And surprise, the only CPU keeping its head above water with 60 FPS was the Ryzen 5500X 3D. To be fair, spots like this aren't everywhere in the game, but if you want smooth cruising through Night City, stronger silicon helps. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 1600 is basically begging you to turn off half the population just to stay alive. Hogwarts Legacy Ultra Settings The Ryzen 5500X3D shines here too, leaving the Ryzen 5600 behind like it missed the train to Hogwarts. Still, most CPU manage well enough. Frame drops, yeah, they happen, but only the X3D keeps things butter smooth in the nastiest spots. The Ryzen 1600 again can't hold 60 FPS poor thing would probably get sorted straight into Hufflepuff. The Last of Us Ultra Settings. Unlike its sequel, this game pushes CPU harder than some benchmarks. All processors are maxed out, dropping clock speeds significantly except the Ryzen 1600 and the Ryzen 5500X3D, which handle it better. Performance is solid overall, aside from the last section of the benchmark, where the Ryzen 1600 completely falls apart. Fortunately, such heavy CPU load is rare in normal gameplay. Dragon's Dogma 2 Ultra Settings If you thought Cyberpunk was bad, welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2, where no CPU can hold 60 FPS. The Ryzen 1600 even dips under 30 FPS, and at that point you might as well be gaming on a toaster. NPCs still spawn right in your face like it's a horror jump scare, so yeah, unless you've got a modern CPU, your journey is going to feel like punishment. Mount and Blade 2, Ultra Settings, 1000 units. Nobody sane plays with 1000 units, but hey, stress test time. The Ryzen 1600 trips and falls under 60 FPS, while the others handle it fine. With realistic settings, the game's optimization is surprisingly great. And once again, the Ryzen 5500X3D Flex is hard over the 5600, it's basically your ticket to epic medieval chaos. Also, please don't forget to like and leave a comment. This will help us promote the video and reach a wider audience. The Witcher 3 Ultra Settings Not nearly as grim as Cyberpunk but performance still depends on location. Navigrad's the real stress zone. Even the Ryzen 1600 holds up decently here, which is shocking. The 5500X3D once again walks away from the 5600 like Geralt, leaving another side quest unfinished. And the Ryzen 3600 and 5500. 
still glued together in performance like Yen and Triss fans fighting forever with no real winner. Now about overclocking. All CPU were overclocked via multiplier. The Ryzen 5500X3D cannot be overclocked, so it remained at stock frequency. Memory tuning was also done. Ryzen 1600 run at 3600 MHz CL16, while all others ran at 3800 MHz CL16, the maximum stable limit for my samples. The memory controller couldn't handle more. The RAM modules were Micron E die, crucial ballistics. So, with overclocking sorted out, let's move to the second part of the tests. Counter-Strike 2. I've added percentage gains after overclocking compared to stock CPU performance. Things got interesting. The Ryzen 5600 actually managed to outperform the 5500X3D. Higher core clocks and memory overclocking gave it an edge small, but still an edge, especially considering the price difference. The Ryzen 1600 somehow woke up from retirement and can now drive a 180Hz monitor. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 5500, thanks to faster memory and higher clock speeds, pulls ahead more confidently compared to the 3600. Escape from Tarkov. In this game, the Ryzen 5600 couldn't quite catch the 5500X3D, but it significantly closed the gap, making FPS much more comfortable overall. And shockingly, the ancient Ryzen 1600 managed to crawl up to 60 FPS. Imagine Grandpa keeping pace in Tarkov, that's wild. Once again, the Ryzen 5500 edges out the 3600, just like in the previous game. Dragon's Dogma 2. This game just laughs at overclocks. Even a juiced up Ryzen 5600 still dips below 60 FPS, and 1% lows are ugly. Honestly, y'all need DDR5 muscle to tame this beast. The 5500 barely edge is the Ryzen 3600 by literally one frame. And the Ryzen 1600, let's just say it's doing worse than a potato on life support. Cyberpunk 2077. This one was much more encouraging. After overclocking, only two CPU dipped below 60 FPS. The game clearly benefits from memory overclocking. The Ryzen 5600 still can't catch the 5500X3D, but overall, FPS is very playable. With reduced crowd density, even the Ryzen 1600 can hit around 80 FPS, which is actually a great result. Hogwarts Legacy, another game where the Ryzen 5600 managed to catch up to the 5500X3D, showing very solid performance. The Ryzen 1600 also received a nice overclocking boost, reducing FPS dips significantly, though not eliminating them entirely. The Ryzen 3600 and 5500 remain almost identical, so nothing new here. The Last of Us. Surprisingly, here the Ryzen 5600 managed to outperform the 5500X3D. 
It runs much hotter than the other CPU, but it still came out on top. Overclocking also helped reduce dips in the final test. Section below 60 FPS was only seen on the Ryzen 1600, which is an excellent result for the rest. Mount and Blade 2. The Ryzen 5500X3D is still king here, crushing the 5600 despite the overclock. The Ryzen 5500 also gets a big win over the 3600, looking more like a proper upgrade. The 1600, even overclocked, it can't fully shake the sub-60 dips, but at least it doesn't embarrass itself quite as much now. The Witcher 3. Once again, the 5600 couldn't catch the 5500X3D. Still, FPS in this game is high across the board, so it's not really a big problem. The game runs smoothly on all CPU tested, even the weakest one. If you enable ray tracing and head to Novigrad, though, performance will tank badly, even on the Ryzen 5500X3D, but that's another story. And now, some conclusions. Zen 1 is done. It's effectively a dead architecture that can't handle new games properly. Even heavy overclocking can't save it from serious performance drops. Mid-generation CPU like the Ryzen 3600 and 5500 are still hanging on. But even when overclocked, you'll have to lower CPU bound graphics settings for smooth gameplay. The Ryzen 5600 still feels fast and responsive, especially when overclocked. In some cases, it even beats the Ryzen 5500X3D. I wouldn't recommend buying one new at the end of 2025, but if you already own it, it's still a solid performer that hasn't lost its value. And finally, the main guest of today's show, the Ryzen 5500X3D. If it were widely available for around the same price as a Ryzen, 5700X, or even a 5800X, it would have been a great upgrade choice for older systems. It puts less strain on BRM, delivers noticeably higher stock performance, and 6 cores are still enough for most modern games. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world with rainbow unicorns. This CPU will likely fade into obscurity, just like the Ryzen 5600X 3D once did. It could have been a great and affordable option, but then again, who would buy the new AM5 platform, right? Something to think about. <coughs> if you like the music used in this video, you can find it on my Telegram channel, where I also post updates about upcoming videos. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.